Welcome to another edition of WCPO Lounge Acts. I'm your host, Ali Martin. Thanks so much for joining us on this Saturday. We are live with a very dynamic duo from Austin, Texas. It's Carly and Johnny Wolf, and they are with the Ghost Wolves, or Ghost Wolf, Wolves, depending on how you feel that day. Guys, welcome. We're excited to have you here. Thank you. All right. Yeah, yeah, nice yeah. yeah. So last night you were playing at Motor. How did that go? It was great. It was yeah. a late night show and yeah. people were out partying and having a good time. We got yeah. loud and crazy. <laughs> and then now and then next moving on to indie, but you've had the pl- we have the pleasure to have you guys here to stop by, play little tunes for us. Now before you start playing, give folks an idea of what your sound is. And we'll talk about this a little bit more later because it's evolved over time. Yeah. Um, I think we're calling it blues punk southern gothic now. Is that your final answer? <laughs> Is that our final answer? <laughs> I thought it was punk today. blues. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you southern guys decide. That's a debate. Punk blues. <laughs> <laughs> they have a lot of different sounds, super dynamic, and more importantly, um, you just released three new songs. Yes. So we're going to hear some of that today. Mm-hmm. So what are the first two songs that we're about to hear? We're going to do Fist and then Crooked Cop, and those are both off of our new release um, on Third Man Records. All right. Well, I'm going to step out. I'm going to have you guys take it away. Okay. The Ghost Wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Broke a string. Yeah. We're gonna take a little uh, technical break. It's technical. Perfect timing here. Yeah. I love it when that happens. <laughs> I broke my G string. Yeah, it, it was the G string. This yeah. is what we call live television, folks. <laughs> We're not gonna show that on camera. <laughs> so, you guys have evolved your sound. You've been playing together for how long? Almost nine. Years, nine long years. Wow. <laughs> what yes. is that like? <laughs> We've been talking about it lately because it's really funny now. We like we look back and we'll say, "Gosh, we played in Cincinnati like eight years ago. That feels like a long time ago now." Yeah, and weren't you throwing burritos <laughs> yeah. at each other? <laughs> we'll, Please tell us that story. <laughs> okay. Well, we played at the Comet Bar like eight years ago, and we did a second set because this guy Jason came in and he was like. <laughs> 
hey, you guys, I came to see you, and you didn't, we, I missed your show, and so we just decided we'd play another set for him, just for him. Wow, you guys are nice. And because we played so late, we started drinking a little extra during our late set, and then we got a little bit too tipsy, and we were throwing burritos around at the end of the night. Hopefully it wasn't yeah. a quality burrito. And Jason is here, by the way, so that's why we all keep looking that way. <laughs> he's, hi he's hiding. He doesn't want to show face. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's really cool. So where, where, when you guys first started, what would you say your sound was, and how did you get to where you are right now? Well, when we started, we were playing um, R.L. Burnside and Ronnie Dawson primarily. So it was a blues and a rockabilly mixture. And we were writing songs like that and getting our inspiration from that. Um, just strictly drums and guitar with one amp. So um, then we started reach, like evolving and um, I, I got two amps to make a bigger sound. And um, Johnny got his, his synth. And so we were able to add a little bit of uh, electronic um, sounds in there. And the music would sort of evolve naturally with adding the different instruments. Yeah, you guys definitely have a really big sound for two people, which I'm sure makes it easy for your travel because it's only two of you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no bass players to complain in the back of the van. Or just <laughs> unplug or things. <laughs> have to feed them, yeah. <laughs> but you do have Dakota. We do. You can't totally We have to feed Dakota, yeah. <laughs> Dakota, what is, so what is life like on the road with Dakota? And why, let, let's even take a step backwards a little bit as to where your name, the name, the Ghost Wolves comes from um, and the roots of that and then how Dakota plays into it. Yeah, so my family has been rescuing and raising wolf hybrid and northern bred dogs um, for years and years. And so I was raised with them. And right when we started this band, we, our alpha male passed away, Ice. And uh, he was with us for 15 years. So he was, you know, a big part of our family. And um, so we wanted to carry his legacy with us. And so we named the band The Ghost Wolves. And since then, when Johnny and I met, um, we had eight at the time. And so it was a pretty big pack, but all of them have since passed on. And from we've, you know, rescued others yeah. since then too and we're actually back up to seven at the moment oh but my yeah it's a lot of dog food <laughs> oh is. my goodness yes it's a lot but the the ghost wolves pack has yeah has grown over the years and um as well as the ones that travel with us and keep us company and keep yeah. us happy so that's that's how, dakota's job how is dakota on the road he's great yeah you know He's so friendly. He meets a lot of friends. He has a lot of fans. He gets a lot yeah. of pets. I, know, I, I think we put him to sleep earlier before we had started the show. <laughs> yeah. He will. He, when he's comfortable, he'll yeah. chill out and lay down. But if he doesn't like like places, then we got a problem. We got a problem. Yeah. You shouldn't be playing there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a sign. Well, they can sense people, I think. You know, yeah. They really can. Oh, yeah. And sense good people, bad people. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have that, that on the road. That sixth sense. Yeah, it's great. Good sign that he's just kind of chilling and laying down. You there. guys are good people, I think. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Stamp of approval. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Um, when you guys are traveling, how, because you have traveled overseas quite a bit too. So how many countries have you been to? You're not, you're not taking Dakota and the pups with you then. Uh, no, I really wish we could because yeah. it'd be so nice. But yeah, he's not much so of a much. plain guy. Yeah. yeah. I wonder why. Uh, just, you know, what's the third plane ticket thing. I guess we could buy him a ticket if we wanted to, but I don't know. It'd be know. hard on him. It'd be hard on him, yeah. So, actually, I talked to our friends in Germany. I was like, you guys need to get a dog that we can just borrow when we come over here. <laughs> we want this dog. <laughs> yeah. Can we just rent your dog? Or something? I don't know. But yeah, so it's... Give him a t-shirt. We miss him a lot. Yeah, we miss him a lot when we go over there. But yeah. they have a good home in Texas when we're traveling. Our family keeps them. So. Well, and what's also cool, though, is you guys have been traveling for since, what, 2011, eight years or something like that? Yeah. What has that been like? It's pretty nuts, honestly. It's, it's, um, it's a little stressful. Like, yeah. traveling can be kind of stressful, but it's really beautiful, too. Like, you get, the, you get back what you give to being yeah. moved around every day. So, it's for, you know, you're not sleeping in the same place, but you're meeting incredible people and yeah. seeing beautiful places most of the time. And, you Could, know. Could you have predicted this, kind of how this music journey has been for you? No, for you know, we 
we've had an eye on releasing something with Third Man Records since we started this band yeah. because we we love the label and we were talking about it like Johnny was like if you would have told me that we were would be able to achieve that when we started this I wouldn't have believed you yeah so we but we we've put in the work and like we it's just like finally a, a big deal um, yeah, these, these three songs for you yeah. Talk, yeah talk about how that all evolved and how that came to be yeah so gosh I guess it's just a long you know history of sending your music out just futilely to record labels who <laughs> don't call you back don't email you back like probably just throw it in the trash can when it gets love there. us yeah <laughs> why don't you love me um and just keep you know Tom Waits said it's like sort of like cooking and you make a batch of something it doesn't taste good you just throw it out yeah. you know and I think we've thrown out like a ton of batches <laughs> at this point but maybe this one tastes good to them so As, what did they what was kind of their feedback what was it that they said this is these are the three songs that we want and how, out of how many did you send them we sent 10 songs to them so okay. I guess the other seven you know actually I take that back Two more are coming out on another label. So I think like five songs are going to really see the light of day out of the 10 songs. And they yeah. notice a difference because um, the process of recording it was different. Yeah. And um, they just, they liked the sound. It, it sounded different. We did it all to tape on, oh, you know, analog, no computers, no digital. And um, these like some really cool old instruments and just yeah. got really cool sounds. What was so, the What was the reason behind that? Why did you decide not? To kind of go really raw and a little more old school, I guess you could say. Yeah, we we always wanted to, but our friend um, put together a tape studio in his in his living room. So he's like our best friend. So he was like, "Hey guys, you know, I'm learning how to use all this equipment. Um, why don't you guys come over and we'll we'll do something? And yeah. you know, while I learn, we can get something together for you guys." And we were just like, "Yeah," because it sounded in. amazing. <laughs> how how are people receiving the songs? Uh, in the mail, generally. <laughs> <laughs> by Owl. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny because Third Man actually, another record they did before they released them on um, balloons. Yeah. Like that's how they released their record. They just attached them to balloons. That's actually kind of cool. Like biodegradable balloons. I thought that was funny. We tried to yeah. hire some pigeons, but. Yeah, like some messenger they pigeons. Very, they weren't Send reliable. it our way. <laughs> creative these days with releasing music because it's not the same as it used to be. No, yeah. I, there's so much out there. There's so yeah. much music. Yeah, so I think people like it so far. You know, we, we had a bunch of people buy a mystery package from us, and it ended up being the vinyl record of oh, this. Oh, that's cool. So that was kind of cool. And, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So, and with your, with your travels, and you said that Japan was one of your favorite um, cities, yes. and, or Japan was one of your favorite places to go and uh, play. Yeah. Why was that? Oh, it was just so far away and so foreign, and we were just yeah. received in such a welcoming way. In a different and it, it was like just, yeah. it, it's quite an experience. I mean, we'll never forget it. It was amazing. But segue, this is not a segue at all, but we're going to talk about your fashion faux pas because you said that in Japan, number one, folks really loved your attire, and two, She's trying to, Carly's trying to put the hat over the headphones. It it's not working. Work. But this is a big, this is kind of a big thing for you guys now, right? Moving into the fashion scene. What is yeah. it all about? It's great. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we have a line of clothing out in Asia in 40 stores with a wow. company called Hysteric Glamour. And they love Carly's art because she, yeah. she sits in the van while I'm driving because I drive everywhere. She draws. Just. Just Just posters and anything like that. So that's, we've been sending them packages of art for a couple of years now and they've been printing it on beautiful clothing. Do you guys plan to go back over to Asia? Yes, we want to. We don't have any direct plans, but it's in our wish list and, you know, in our um, things we're manifesting. That's awesome. (laughs) That is great. Okay, so we are going to now let you play out the next three songs. Okay. (laughs) Since we had popped a string. All right. Uh, Tell everybody what these three songs are going to be now that you're going to play. Okay, so we're going to do Crooked Cop, which is a very happy song. And then (laughs) uh, then we'll do, what are we doing after that? Uh, Day Will Follow Dawn. Day Will Follow Dawn, another happy song. (laughs) And um, Mars. All right. Let's go to Mars. Let's Let's do it. Take it away. Getting it together here. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's early, man. It's early. We had a late night.
Happy songs today. Let's go to Mars, y'all. Do you want to go to Mars? Do you want to go to
the next direct flight. <laughs> I'll be there. Jump on in. I know. I'm in. I'm in. Okay. So, more importantly, where can everybody find and get your music? TheGhostWolves.com. All right. <laughs> guys, thank you so much for being here. This has been so, so much fun. Now, they are off to Indy next. And if you want to check out more lounge acts, you can find us on YouTube, Apple Podcast, Stitcher, Spotify, and of course, WCPO.com slash lounge acts. And this has been a lounge acts with the Ghost Wolves. Johnny, thank Carly, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having Thanks. us. That was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. Safe travels. Thank, thank you. you. Till next time.